Are you looking for a relatively easy but new macrame plant hanger design to brighten up your home? If so, you've got to check this video out. Especially spring here and while it doesn't feel like that here in Canada just yet, I'm excited for what's to come. To me, spring is all about blooming flowers and I've been wanting to design some new daisy knot patterns for a while now. I was looking for something a little bit different and I went and spent 10 plus hours coming up with some unique daisy knot patterns and eventually settled on this beautiful daisy knot chain pattern incorporated into this beginner friendly plant hanger pattern. If you think it looks a little intimidating, don't worry, I will walk you through how to make this from start to finish. If you're ready, let's jump right in. Listed here are the materials that I'm using for this particular pattern. You can mix and match the colors that you want I'll be using three colors from our Lush line, and these are cords made from Egyptian cotton. So if you look closely, they are super fine fibers, giving off a nice shiny sheen to it, and it's super soft and easy to work with. I'll be using these three colors, rose dust, buttercream, and sage. And you'll also need a ring. I'm using this two inch wooden ring. If you're interested in any of the materials discussed, I'll link them in the description below. I'll be using the buttercream cords. So the buttercream slash beige colored cords for the inner part of the daisy flowers. So taking the two strands at 250 centimeters long each, we're going to weave both strands through the ring. Make sure the ends are even on both sides and then we're going to take our two strands of 450 centimeter long pink cords. We're going to weave one through each side of the beige cords. So the beige buttercream cords should be in the middle and there should be one pink cord on the right and one pink cord on the left. Make sure the ends of the pink cords are even on both sides once you have weaved them through. Then take the long strands of 540 centimeter long green cords and we're going to weave them on the outer left and right sides of the ring. Also ensuring that the ends are even once you weave the cords through. Now the placement of these cords here in its particular position is important because each color will have a particular role in making the daisy chain pattern. Once everything is nice and organized and the ends are nice and even, so all the green ends should match in length at the bottom, all the pink ends should match as well as the beige ends. Now I'll be using a pink strand of cord at 60 centimeters long to make a gathering knot gathering the cords together right under the ring. You start by forming a loop on one end, holding it with one hand, then take the longer cord end and start wrapping it around the cords several times until you run out of room at the end of the cord. Then you take that cord end through the loop at the bottom and then you pull on the top end to tighten the knot. If you're interested, we do have a free 50 Knots and Senates ebook available for download over on bochinot.com. It's a helpful guide to have by your side whether you are a beginner or advanced macrame artist. It's nice to have a knot guide with you just to refer back to on how to make certain knots if you forget or to help inspire you to include some new knots you haven't used before in your projects. Now it's totally up to you what color cord you want to use. I've just chosen to use the pink cord to make this gathering knot. 
So if your cords happen to have changed positions after you had made the gathering knot, that's okay. Just make sure that you have laid out green, pink, beige, beige, pink, green on one side and then the same thing on the other. We will be using these six strands of cords here to make the daisy chain pattern. We are going to separate out the front to six cords and then remove the back six cords for later so that we can work with the front six cords first. Now taking the outer left and right green cords, we're going to fold them on top of one another. Then taking the right pink cord, we're going to make a half hitch knot with the green cords as anchor cords to the right. Then we're going to do the same thing with the left pink cord, make a half hitch knot over to the left. Now pull on the anchor cords to tighten. Now with the green cord on the right side, bring it down. Then with the pink cord, pay attention here as we make our first vertical lark's head knot. So we start by taking the cord going over and through the loop to the right and then using the same cord end go under and through the loop to the right. Once done, you should see a little loop sitting on the right hand side and that is the vertical lark's head knot. Now we're going to do the same thing on the left side mirroring what we just did on the right for a vertical lark's head knot on the left side. And now this is the part where we add the beige cords to the center of the pattern. First, take the two pink cords in the middle and we're going to overlap them, crisscross them on top of each other. Take the middle two beige cords, make a half inch knot to the right with the middle right cord and then with the middle left cord, make a half inch knot on the left side. Then pull on the anchor cords to tighten this knot. And now on the right side again, using the pink and green cords, we're going to make another vertical lark's head knot. So going over and through the loop, and then under and through the loop on the right side. Then repeat the same thing on the left side. And then last but not least, crisscross the green cords and then with the right pink cord, make a half inch knot to the right side. And then with the left pink cord, make a half inch knot to the left side. And we are now complete with our first daisy pattern. So in order to hide the beige and the pink cords for this chain section, 
we're going to use the pink and beige cords as anchor cords throughout this next part of the pattern and the green cord as the only working cord on both sides. So taking the green cord from behind, we're going to go over and through the right and then under and through the right for a vertical lark's head knot. Then underneath, add three more consecutive vertical lark's head knots. Now on the left side, take the green cord underneath and through the left side, and then we're going to make four consecutive vertical lark's head knots mirroring what we did on the right side. Now our chain pattern is almost complete. Now we just have to form a chain here by starting our next daisy pattern. To do that, take the green cords, overlap them on top of one another Take the pink cords, make a half hitch knot on both sides. We're starting this next daisy pattern the same way as we had started the other daisy pattern. And then now complete the rest of the daisy pattern the same way we had completed the daisy pattern right above. Now we're going to take the green cords underneath and through the left and right sides and we're going to make four consecutive vertical lark's head knots on both sides. And now we have completed two sections of this chain, make three more sections underneath, ensuring that you finish off the last section with the daisy knot pattern as well. Now we're going to take the cords at the back and make the exact same five daisy chain knot patterns.
Once both sides are done, this is what the chain pattern should look like. And now we can close this plant hanger off with a basket at the bottom made with square knots. Now you can adjust this basket depending on how big your plant pot is. To start, we are going to take the two plant hanger posts side by side and then with the middle four cords, so the two beige cords and the two pink cords, we're going to make a square knot several inches down. The approximate size of the plant pot holder I am making at the bottom will hold up to a six or seven inch size pot. So if you want something a little bit bigger, you do have to bring your square knots down even further. And you can adjust accordingly once you have made the square knots on both sides, try to fit in your plant pot and then adjust the square knots to loosen them up. So now on the other side, using the exact same cords, the two beige and the two pinks, make a square knot several inches down, keeping the same amount of space as the other side. Match the square knots on both sides to make sure that they are even. There's an even amount of space above. And if not, either tighten or loosen up the square knots so that they match. Once we are done the square knots on the sides, we are going to work underneath the daisy pattern. For this part, you will need an additional strand of cord and I'm using a strand of beige cord at 125 centimeters long. We are going to loosen up the bottom pink part of the daisy pattern and then we're going to weave the cord through. Match the ends of the cords on both sides and then re-tighten the daisy knot at the bottom. Once that's done, we are going to take the green cords underneath the daisy knot pattern as working cords on both sides for a square knot with the beige cords as anchor cords. Now what we're going to do is bring the side sections down beside it and then in that same spot we are going to make a square knot a few inches down. Then turn the pattern onto the other side and repeat the same pattern. Thread another cord through and then repeat for two square knots. Skipping a few more inches below, we are going to add a row of alternating square knots all around.
Once you're complete with all of your square knots, this is the part where you can place your plant pot into the basket to make sure that it fits nicely. If it doesn't, if it's too small, loosen up the square knots, or if it's a little too big and it's a little too loose, you can tighten up your square knots. But if it's fine, like my pattern here, the plant pot fits nicely, we can gather the cord ends at the bottom And with another strand of 60 centimeter long cord, we're going to make a gathering knot. Trim off the excess cords from the gathering knot and then also trim the fringe at the very bottom. And the pattern is now complete. What really makes this daisy chain knot pattern stand out is the use of three different colors to create this chain pattern. One color is used for the flower, one color is used for the center of the flower, and one is used for the chain in between the flowers. And that means this is versatile in that you can choose whatever colors you want to mix and match to create your own daisy knot patterns. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and click that subscribe button to stay tuned to all of our latest DIY macrame tutorials and helpful tips and tricks videos. If you feel you have what it takes to enhance your macrame skill set, you may want to check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.